everyone, it's Kathy, and welcome back here to my craft room and on my YouTube channel, Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin'. Thanks so much for joining me today, and if you like what you see today, um, please ring the bell, um, subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and make sure you give me a thumbs up, a like, because this all helps my al algorithms in the YouTube world so that they push my videos out. The more people that like and comment and share um, and subscribe, then the more that they YouTube pushes my videos out for other people to see, which helped me grow my channel, and in turn, hopefully, will help me build my Stamping Up business. I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. I'm located in the beautiful state of North Carolina, but I can take care of your stamping needs no matter where you live in the United States of America. I do not work outside of the country because Stamping Up has demonstrators all over the world, and every area has their own marketing area. Look at this beautiful card we're going to do today. I have fallen in love with this. Everybody loves those pinwheel cards. This one has a twist. Look what happens. It opens up to reveal either a message or an image on the inside. How stinking cute is that? And it's so easy to make. It's really, it looks complicated, but it could not be simpler. And look at this. Everything goes back together just like this and you just tuck that one corner back under to close it back down fits in a regular medium size um, A2, A2 card size envelope so this makes a beautiful card to send to anyone and you can have a message on the inside of your pinwheel you can have a message at the bottom of your card base and you also can open it up and have a message on the inside so this is such a versatile card it is beautiful and just think of the arrays of different colored papers that you can use this one I use the the um, was it glorious or gorgeous glorious gingham and I use the pretty peacock on this one so therefore I use the pretty peacock um, card base I have a white piece inside for a sentiment or a handwritten note and then I made this with one of these pieces and you will need a six by six piece of paper but I'm gonna show you don't limit it to just your six by six paper packs because I'm going to do one today, and I'm going to use this beautiful um, Fresh as a Daisy. I think that's the name of the paper. Let me double check. I know it's from the Cheerful Daisy. Yes, Fresh as a Daisy. And there's so many different um, pieces in here that you can choose from that it's it's really hard to choose just one. But, um, you know, we have the mauve and that beautiful wheat, uh, the wild wheat color on the back, that would be gorgeous. But I decided on this one because the back of it is so much different than the front. Look at that beautiful azure afternoon. I'm pretty sure that's the color. Let me look at the back and make sure that that is one of our colors. Azure, yep, azure afternoon. So we're gonna use a, a card base that is that color and we are going to design this card and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down to a six by six so I'm going to turn it over and I want to see this looks like it's going in the right direction so I'm going to bring out my trimmer and I'm going to situate my paper right to this lip over here and all the way up to the top and when I cut this in half that's going to give me a six by twelve inch piece so that gives me that one piece and now I'm just going to turn it this way and I'm going to cut it off at another six inch piece. So there is my piece that we're going to be working with. Now I'm going to grab my scoreboard because we're going to be scoring in four places but they're really simple and easy scores because all you're going to do is line this up into your scoreboard and since this is a designer series paper your little scoring tool has two ends on it. You have a fine edge that's small got ink on my hand and you have a larger one on this end anytime that you're using designer series paper use that larger tip because it doesn't tear into the paper now all we're going to do the only score measurement you need to remember is one and a half and we're going to score at one and a half and I like to go back over it then turn your paper a quarter of a turn and do one and a half and turn it another quarter turn do you get the, the pattern here? One and a half. 
and turn it one more time. So what you're doing, you're scoring on all four sides at one and a half inches. That's all we're going to do. So if you turn it over, you can see those score marks better on the solid side than you can this side. And I'm going to show you a trick in getting your pieces cut out where they will be more even and easier to see. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold. I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish. Grab my bone folder. I want to fold all of these score lines and just give them a good press. This will help our card when, it, when we bring it together uh, and it will also help when we put this in our trimmer to trim off our corner pieces. Now what we need to do, and to make this simple, there will be a diagram on the um, PDF tutorial. So I'll have a diagram with this on here showing you what you need to cut. That's coming off, that's coming off, this one, and this one. So, very simple. You're just taking off all four corners of your 6x6 um, six six paper. Now, I find it easier to line this up at the 2.5 inch mark, right there, just like that. Bring up my cut blade to the one and a half inch mark and I have a piece of white uh, quarter inch strip of white copy paper and I use some glue dots to glue that in and that allows me to see that marking over here much easier so you have a little registration mark right here on the side and I'm lining that up directly with that one and a half inch mark and I'm just going to cut up then I can turn it this way and line it up to one and a half and I can fold that over and now all we have to do is cut down to there and that piece comes out. How simple is that? And look at your nice even piece that you have cut away. It makes it so simple to do it this way. Now I'm going to hang on to those because I might be able to use those on something else. So again I'm going to line this up to the one and a half inch mark right there. I'm going to come up to one and a half I am going to make sure this is lining up perfectly. Slice up, open it up, and now I'm going to fold this back and line this up to the one and a half inch mark and slice down. Just like that. And that comes out. And we'll do the same thing. I'm going to repeat the same thing down here on the other end. Line it up one and a half, slice up, and now we're going to fold this back and line this up, and we're going to come down here and just slice that up, and that one's off, and now the only other corner we have is this last corner right here, and I'm going to line it up just like that up to the one and a half. Such an easy way to cut out your pieces, especially if you can see your markings on your trimmer. It just makes it super, super, super easy. Now I'm going to fold that one back. And I'm going to line this up again to that one and a half and I'm just going to slice. That's how easy it is just to slice those out. Now you can do this with a scissor but I found I was showing um, some little um, discretions in my point that I didn't like. Okay, so we got that done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fold. And I'm going to show you, here's a diagram of our folds. And what you're going to do, you want this to look like a pinwheel. So starting at the bottom, no matter how you have your paper turned, it doesn't matter. Starting at your bottom piece, you're going to fold this corner up even with that score line across the top. Just like that. You can use your bone folder if you want and go ahead and get that score down. Turn it. You're always going to do the left hand edge. So this one is going to go up and score it. And then we're going to turn it on this one the left hand side, fold it up, and give it a score, and then the last one, left hand side, 
it's always your left hand side of your piece that's been cut. Pull that up, crease it, and there we go. So now we have to decide where we want our pattern pieces to go. So we're going to fold this one over and that one on top of it. Fold this one down and that one on top of it. And then this last one is going to go, and that does need to be trimmed just a hair. So I am going to take my snips because that did not cut that score line away. Just like that. And we are going to fold that and then we're going to tuck this piece under. Okay, this piece goes down like that. Then this one's going to come and go up underneath there like that. And then the last one's going to tuck right there. So when you finish, you're going to have the perfect little pinwheel. And if any of your corners are not straight, this is the time you want to straighten them up. If you see that you've got a little edges that need to be trimmed, then this would be the time to trim them up. Just like that. That one's a little bit, I think that one's okay. Let's score everything down nice and tight. Now you'll notice that back here, you have that solid area. That you're not going to see because that's going to go down on your card base. This is what you're going to see and when you open it, you're going to have this beautiful blue. And we can do that any which way you want to. I think I want it like this. Now what I like to do is keep my corners folded just like that so that when everything is said and done um, you will have this being your inside piece and I wanted that wash going you know it really doesn't matter I think I like it up and down more than sideways but this is going to be where we're going to put an image and I think for this since I'm using that beautiful daisy paper I want to do a daisy so I'm going to grab my Cheerful Daisy dies. And I think I'm going to use this larger die because I'm going to make these flowers white. And I'm going to grab a piece of white cardstock. And I don't need them all. I don't care about the leaves. Or maybe I do. Let's see if they'll all get on here. I think they'll all fit right there. So I'm going to go and die cut this. And I'll be right back. And we're going to pop this all out. This can all be trash now. There's not enough of paper there to do anything for. I'm just going to drop it like that. And that will pretty much pop all of my pieces or most of my pieces out. Um, and this is a beautiful little spray. Now whether this is all going to fit in here, of course not. But what we can do is we can cut off the pieces that we want out of here. And I'm going to grab my die cut, my die brush, and I'm going to actually use that to clean out my die. So I'm just going to lay it onto my piece, and I'm just going to go across it with that die brush, get all those little bits and pieces out of there, especially those little dots in the middle of the flowers. Those are always the hardest ones to come loose, but you can see with the die brush, you can pretty much get them all out. I think I have one left that didn't want to go, but we got him out too. And there is our little spray of flowers. So this is a great tool to have. Now, when you buy this, it doesn't come with the take your pick. This is an add-on. When you order the dye brush, you get these two um, pieces of foam and you get the brush attachment. So you do need to have your take your pick already for this to work on. But um, it is a wonderful set to have. Uh, I actually bought a separate take your pick for the reason that um, I wanted to have this always in here ready to go and not have to change my, my um, end out every time. And I'm glad I did because that works really good for me. Now I'm going to take my paper snips and I'm going to snip these flowers apart. And you're going to see why in just a minute. So there's one. And these snip apart really super easy. And this one I just want to get the leaf off of it. I don't think I need that leaf right there. 
So now we can decide how we want, I don't know, maybe I do want it like that. I'm going to snip off these extra little pieces that are on here. Just a little snip here and there. And then we can decide where we want this daisy to live. And I think right there is a good place. We can also bring the leaves in and put them right here. Beautiful. And then maybe for this one, we'll just have one little daisy right there. And why don't we tuck this one right there? Now, all we have to make sure is everything is adhered in here where it's not um, impeding our score lines because this will still need to wrap around it so it's, it's not shown. So what we want to make sure we're doing is not going outside of our lines. Now, a great way to do that would be just open everything up and fold everything back onto itself. That way you'll have just your square here. And, and don't be afraid to score those lines. The, better, the more you score them, uh, the better this card's going to work. So let's put one daisy right here. I do want to do a little bit of yellow inking in the middle. And I think for that, I'm just going to get Lemon Lolly. And I'm going to get a Stampin' Blend. And I think I'm just going to use the, the dark Lemon Lolly. And what I want to do is I just want to go around, and I'm going to use my brush tip for this. And I just want to go around right in here. Just like that. And I'm going to do that for each one of my daisies. This one's real easy to do because it's just coloring across that end. And that one. And now I think I might want to do a little bit of green on my leaf. So let's grab a, let's do a light shaded spruce. Yeah, I think we can get away with the light shaded spruce for the leaf. So I'm going to pick this up, and I'm just going to spread some color over top of these leaves. I don't want anything really bright. I don't want it to, you know, be a total giveaway. I am going to need to put this on something. I'm going to use my little piece here that I used for my, um, and I'm just going to spread a little bit of ink over top of the leaves. Look how pretty those are. And this is the light shaded spruce and the Stampin' Blend markers. Love my Stampin' Blends. They blend so well. Thus the name, Stampin' Blend. And they just make everything look so pretty. So those little leaves are done. So we can go ahead and close this up. And now we are ready, leaving that closed like that, we are ready to put down our daisy. So I'm going to put one, the larger one right here in this bottom left hand corner. And I think I'm just going to use some regular liquid glue on the back of this. I don't want to get it in the middle because those are holes and they're going to, they're going to pop up. The glue is going to come through those holes. So I'm just going around on the petals themselves. And I'm going to put it in just like that, making sure that everything is over that fold line. Then I think I'm going to put this one right about there. And again, I'm just going to go on the outer edges of the actual petals of the flower. And again, I want to make sure that nothing is impeding the outside fold of this um, card. So this one I'm going to put like right about here, like that. 
and I also want to make sure my make sure that my leaves are coming out right about there oh yeah that's pretty so I'm gonna put some glue right here on the leaf right here on the stem and then I'm gonna lift it underneath there and just tack that down ever so gently like so and now this flower up in that top right corner like this and that is putting our center down inside what a nice little surprise to open this card and have a beautiful little amount of florals inside of your card so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back and make sure that my edges are folded where they need to be that one goes there that goes there this goes here and then this one is going to go back up under here something like that now here is where if you decide you want to emboss this this is where you would do your embossing i'm going to refold that kind of retrain my paper maybe even right here just like that and give this a good press now if you want to emboss this this would be the time to put this in an embossing folder and run it through your emboss machine now i'm going to try it with this with the time stamped what is this not time stamped i'm sorry exposed brick i think this is very pretty and i think it will look good look how pretty that is isn't that gorgeous love those colors all right i'm going to grab out my stamp and cut and emboss machine and we are working with a 3d embossing folder so make sure you get the right sandwich all you're going to need for it is your number one plate and your number four plate these are the only two plates you need if you're embossing a 3d um, embossing folder so what you're going to do is put in your number one plate your embossing folder with your folded edge to the top and then your number four plate over it and then we're just going to crank it through and it may not feel like it's doing anything but it really is so there is that and now look at this beautiful embossing isn't that gorgeous and it flattens everything out so well this is ready to go onto a card base so let me grab put my plates back up and i'm going to grab a piece of azure afternoon it's such a beautiful beautiful color and this color is in our bright family and this is a brand new color and oh my word look at that color it is stunning so what we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to cut a card base so i am going to cut a card base that's five and a half i got my 11 inch side at the top of my trimmer and i'm going to bring it to five and a half and we're going to slice this in two and now I'm going to bring out my scoring tool again. And this time we're going to use our the other end because we're using cardstock. So I'm going to use the smaller end. And I'm going to score this at four and a quarter. So if you notice, I'm bringing my um, scoring tool down closest to my um, paper. I'm laying it into that track. And then I'm just going to bring it straight down. Bringing it straight down closest you can to the, you know, your, more this in this direction, you have a better chance of it not jumping the track. And if you've ever had your uh, scoring tool to jump the track, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And that can be so aggravating. So now all we need is a piece of white to go on top of that. And I have a brand new piece of white cardstock right here. So we're going to cut this, 
I had an extra piece. Okay, we're gonna cut this at four inches. About five and a quarter. And then this is gonna be our piece that will go onto our card base. Look at that blue and white, it's so pretty together. Love it. But we're gonna do some stamping on this as well. This will definitely go down. Make sure you open it, make sure your image is where you wanted it, and it is. That's exactly where I wanted it. So I can go ahead now and pop this back together. And all I'm doing is folding this piece up under you know, sort of like that box fold that we used to do where you fold um, your corners in. And look how beautiful that is on there. Love it, love it, love it. But we got the bottom down here where we can stamp a sentiment. And I'm going to grab my cheerful daisies and see if we have something in it that we will want to use. So cheerful daisies. And I love that one that says, you made my day. Um, wishing you the brightest birthday. I think I'm gonna make this one a birthday card. I like, I like that. So, wishing you the brightest birthday. And we're gonna put that right about there. So I'm gonna move that off and move this off. Make sure I have nothing on my desk because I don't want anything that's going to mess up my sentiment. So my sentiment's going to go right there and I'm going to stamp it in that at, um, Azure Afternoon. I love this color. It's very similar to the Tahitian Tide, but if you, you think they are until you put them together. And look, the Azure Afternoon is a little bit deeper this is much brighter. So we're going to use the Azure Afternoon. And I'm going to grab a block and pick this up. And I'm just taking my fingers and rubbing over that stamp and just to kind of condition it so it will take the ink. And then we're going to come right down here in this bottom corner. Wishing you the brightest birthday. Love that. Now the other thing that I want to do is I want this little daisy right about here. So this is our detail. I think I want it like that. That's the detailed, and we're going to need the little middle, and we're also going to need the, this is the detailed, I'm sorry, this is the detailed one. So we're going to grab that and put that right about there, because remember, this is going to go up here. So I want a little something something down here, just to dress this up a little bit, and I'm going to stamp that in the Memento... Uh, tux, do I want to do it? Yeah, we're going to do it in tuxedo black. So I'm just going to pick that up and then ink this up. And I'm going to stamp that right about there. Just like that. I think for this, I want this to be Lemon Lolly. So we're going to put the Lemon Lolly right there. And I love, love, love this Lemon Lolly. It's so pretty. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to stamp in the Lemon Lolly, our little middle for our flower. Just like that. It's very subtle. This is such a beautiful shade of yellow that it works so well. And now I'm going to grab another stamp block because I want to do this one and I want it to be in the blue. 
just like that. And I'm going to actually stamp off. So I'm going to bring over a piece of glue, I mean a piece of paper, and I'm going to stamp off and then stamp on. And that colors it in beautifully. That's the beauty of a two-step stamp set. And we still have a little bit of um, white showing, which is what you want anytime that you're doing a two-step a two stamp. You definitely want that. Now I'm going to grab out my little stem because I want the stem to look as though it's coming. And for to do that, I am going to use a little piece of a sticky note, just a corner. And I'm going to stick that right about here and then I'm going to stamp that right up into that flower right there and that little sticky note is going to help shield that from grabbing uh, the ink up into that flower but yet still give us a very nice a wash of color so I'm going to grab my garden green And I'm just going to ink the top part of that, and I'm going to stamp it right there. Now when I pull that off, that's going to give me the effect that that stem, that stem is going all the way up into the flower. And if it doesn't give you the full effect that you want, by all means, come in with a marker. And this is old olive, so it's going to look a little bit different, but just come in like that and just kind of attach it. And that's all you need to do. And if you want that stem to have a little bit of color, you can always do that. And how pretty is that? Now, this piece is ready to go in right about here and make sure that our daisy is where we want it and it is so now we can we can take and put this part of our card put some glue on it again double check and make sure your daisies are where they want to be where you want them to be and and they are so i'm going to put glue like this And you could use um, tear and tape on the back of this. You could use uh, your stamp and seal, whatever you like, just whatever glue or adhesive that you prefer. And then just put this down. Try to get it straight and even if you can. Just like that. And once that's done, now you're ready to attach it to your card base. Now I'm going to use um, liquid glue again for this, just because I've got it right here. and make sure it's going in the right direction and then just sit it down onto your card base and you want to make sure you're getting everything squared up just like that now you can do this with any set you have you can do like I used on that first card I used the so refreshing let me pull that card back out. The So Refreshing set, and that was the sentiment, the flowers, and also the picture with the lemonade. And the hello came from GoTo Greetings. So that was what I used on that one. And this one I used All Cheerful Daisies and um, the Daisy paper as well. Now I didn't put a sentiment in here, but you could add a little strip and put a sentiment here. Just make sure that it goes across here and does not impede 
with your piece that's folded under. That's why it's always better if you keep your pieces folded under as you do this. So um, again, what a stinking cute card this is. And just remember to fold that back under. You just do that number. Make sure everything is folded down. And then you are going to do this and then bring this piece under here. Just like that. Aren't those cute? I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I showed it done in gingham and I also showed it done in um, the Fresh as a Daisy um, paper. I did not put a piece of cardstock in here, but I will so that there will be a, a piece that you can sign, write a message on, or either stamp a sentiment, whichever you prefer. I think this turned out so cute. Both of them are adorable. They're both different, but yet stunning in their own right so god bless and keep you and as i always say in closing let everything that you do and say bring glory to our father in heaven he is worthy if you saw anything here today that you liked and you would like to purchase these sets uh the stamp sets or the paper that i used please visit my my uh, website it is it is listed below where it says i'll uh, click here to shop and you can shop my website for any and all of your stamping up needs thank you so much and until we craft again god bless and keep you bye bye